It's civilization versus nature's fury. Raging blizzards bury cities under thousands of tons of snow. Howling hurricanes tear apart coastal communities with wind and rain. And flash floods wipe entire towns off the face of the earth. As the skies clear, people begin to pick up the pieces. But after the storm, insidious damage is still being done. Our most vital natural resource is under assault, our nation's waters. We're at the Chattahoochee Nature Center and we're trying to find out what a watershed is. First victim, I need you to tell me what a watershed is. Do you have any idea? Watershed? A watershed? Where people go to the bathroom? Sweating, I guess. <laughs> Something to do with sweating? Uh-huh. Like after you run when you... You perspire, yeah. And then you shed it? Uh-huh. We wanted to ask you if, if you knew what a watershed was. A watershed? Yeah. Is it kind of like the rain? Do you know what a watershed is? A shed that holds water. Come here for a second. I want to ask you something. Do you know what a watershed is? No. No. Do you have any idea? What do you think it has something to do with? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> what a watershed is? Yeah. That's just a drain pool, I guess you'd say, or the drain area that where the water, the rainwater drains into the river. Correct. That's a great answer. A watershed is that area of land that drains to a body of water, be that if it's a river, a stream, the ocean, an estuary, a bay. Wherever you live drains to some water body and you live in a watershed, so everyone lives in a watershed. And in this modern industrial age, our water sources are becoming more contaminated with each passing year. The biggest water quality problem that we have in the nation today is polluted runoff. All water east of the Continental Divide drains to the Atlantic, while water west of the Divide flows to the Pacific. And one drop of rain can cross many different watersheds along the way. As runoff flows into rivers, streams, and storm drains, the water picks up trash, dirt, bacteria, toxic chemicals, and fertilizers, creating a soup of pollutants that is extremely hazardous to the environment. And the consequences of polluted runoff exist worldwide. The UN estimate is that there's about a billion people on the planet right now who don't have adequate access to fresh water. 97% of all water on Earth is salty ocean water. Of the remaining 3% that's fresh, over two-thirds is frozen in glaciers and polar ice. That leaves less than 1% of all the planet's water for our use. I predict in the future that some of the U.S. water needs are going to come through pipeline because we have just overused our supply. To address the complex threats facing U.S. water resources, the Environmental Protection Agency recommends adopting a watershed approach. We're trying to reconnect some of the uh, river. It's a method that looks at each watershed for its own unique set of environmental challenges and solutions. In many cases, people mistakenly identify large discharge pipes in the water as the problem. But that may not be the problem. It may be coming from agricultural runoff. It may be coming from stormwater runoff over parking lots and impervious surfaces. Every watershed is different, and you need to look at each watershed in its own terms and then think systematically about how you remediate, how you clean up that watershed. In California, the Santa Monica Bay watershed drains a dangerous amount of polluted runoff after each storm. When it rains, literally the whole residue of urban living ends up getting washed into the storm drain system and ends up going straight into the bay on Santa Monica Bay's beaches with no treatment whatsoever. It's actually like a giant toilet flushing because all of the pollution, the dog mess has been building up and building up and building up. When it rains, it just flushes into the storm drain and goes directly into the, uh, the surf. In 1996, the Santa Monica Bay Restoration Commission proved there was a link between the contaminated runoff in the Santa Monica Bay and reports of illness afflicting people who swim there. What we did find was at the outlets of storm drains, no matter where they were up and down the bay, if there was a flow of runoff into the surf zone, those people that were swimming in those areas uh, definitely experienced higher incidences of illnesses. The pollutants in the water affect surfers because we're actually the indicator species with all the pollutants. Um, 
When we are in the waters, we're ingesting it through our skin and our mouth. Even if people don't take a swallow of water, it's still getting into our systems, our ears, any orifice on your body. And it causes infections, it can cause uh, colds, sore throats at the very least. I wouldn't want to swim in you know, water that's got those diseases in there, you know, just floating around, making more diseases. I've seen it pretty much as bad as it can be. I've seen crap floating out in the water, literally. Generically, we call it fecal coliform. More specifically, you might know of it as E. coli, salmonella, or enterococcus. Whatever's in poop. There's times when it tastes funky, for sure. Every day, the city and county of Los Angeles perform a battery of tests to keep the public informed about water quality in the Santa Monica Bay. Cesar Arzadon begins the monitoring process each morning by taking a series of coastline water samples. Then it's back to the lab for analysis. Most of the bacteria that you're going to see, you're going to, it, it comes from feces. And when you put under the UV light, you're going to see a different kind of color. Uh, it, it's a fluorescent uh, sign that there is a bacteria, and that one is called E. coli. That one definitely eats uh, feces uh, from animals, or it could be humans also. The results are reported to the health department, and beach warnings are posted as necessary. The number of beach postings has decreased, and 85% of the beaches that have been monitored in California have received either A or B grades, and that's significantly different than um, four years ago. But while progress is being made in California, the harmful effects of polluted runoff are a growing concern everywhere. So what can the average person do to help reduce pollution in our watersheds? How you apply pesticides or not in your garden, how you wash your cars, uh, making sure that uh, you don't throw cigarette butts out onto the street. Do not dump things on the ground, especially oils or any chemical pollutants. Uh, pick up after your dogs. A lot of people don't realize how important that is. And just be a conscientious citizen and, and don't leave anything on the ground. I think one person can make a difference and, and needs to make the difference. If not you, who? Coming up. We're heading for what's known as an ecosystem collapse. Can the Gulf of Mexico be saved from polluted runoff? It was a flood of apocalyptic scale. 26,000 square miles of the lower Mississippi Valley inundated by water. More than 200 lives lost and 600,000 people displaced from their homes. The flood of 1927 was the most disastrous in U.S. history, and its effects are still felt today. After the flood of 27, massive levees were put in place. And while they helped protect the lower Mississippi River Basin from flooding, the levees and other human activities would ultimately harm the watershed in unforeseen ways. The Gulf State of Louisiana is the terminus of the Mississippi River. The mighty watershed that drains 41% of the area of the lower 48 states into the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, we receive water from as far away as Montana, from Michigan to Pennsylvania, Ohio, Iowa. All those waters drain right past this area right here. But by the time all that water enters the Gulf, it has accumulated enough contaminants from polluted runoff to create an enormous hypoxic zone an area of water lacking in vital oxygen. The size of the low oxygen zone in the Gulf of Mexico is about 9,000 square miles. That's equal to the size of the state of New Jersey. The shortage of oxygen is killing fish and other sea life and could potentially have a devastating effect on the regional economy. We are the largest navigation port in the United States. We are the second largest in the world. We have the largest fishery in this country. When we was crabbing, a lot of times all our crabs we did, we can't even sell them. The reason hypoxia should be of concern to most citizens in this nation is because it's a sign. It's a sign of the degradation of our water resources. We're heading for what's known as an ecosystem collapse. If you're going to have an ecological disaster caused by the offshore hypoxic areas, then that absolutely translates into an economic disaster.